I can't hear the fireworks. Part two. The season one finale. Uh, it's going to be a huge, huge day. The fact that you could ever be mad at her in the first place. All our hopes and expectations riding on this one event. <laughs> the sister gives me life. <laughs> you suck. There isn't a metaphor there. I don't know where it is. But this is the expectations. As we know, things always go how you expect them to. Especially when you make it really important and have a lot riding on it. Or it could all be really great and sweet. No, there it is. Get back in your box. No, this is gonna happen. It's gonna happen. We're gonna jailbreak her. And all of them are at a loss. Her bed is gigantic. Wow, to have our hopes crushed so early in the episode. It gives me hope, though, that they're gonna jailbreak her out. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, I hope they got burned. It's not just summer that will end eventually. It's this whole thing. Wait, is she actually missing it? Is she actually missing it? It's, it's already starting. Time pressure! Kicking into high gear. Operation Rescue Kaguya. Yeah, she's been conditioned to think that. Yeah, I can feel like that. I can feel like, a, you know, two days apart and you imagine they're just, they've already moved on. They found someone new. Gotta have a little faith. Use your plotting for good this time instead of creepy bed escapades. <laughs> Speaking of windows, you could use it. Use one. We got a king of the, the ramen world. And he's a taxi driver. It's, um... <laughs> yeah, it's not her. Good friend right there. <laughs> the attention to nails gives, gives her away. I mean, you stole the beach episode from me, don't steal the fireworks episode from me too. You know what vehicle might be able to cut through this crowd? A bicycle. No, no, don't go there, not, don't spiral again. You're out, it's not over till it's over. Oh no, <laughs> they just missed each other again. This guy's an expert at ramen and the human heart, a real man's man. <laughs> Such a dramatic and romantic backdrop premise. Fireworks raging. You're missing them. It's so much more than this event, too. It's so much more than this episode. It's her heart opening to the world in a way that's terrifyingly risky, but vital to her survival, or else the other path for her is just slipping into despair like she's been doing in the episode so far. She has to know that she can get what she needs. That life isn't just living under the prison of someone else's will. It's a Pandora's box that will be great, but it will not only be great, it will be terrible as well because it's it's vulnerability. You know, it's like finally getting out of the safety of a room, which in this case is sort of parental tyranny and bearing the risks and also the sweetness of her life on her own. And for me, it's similar emotional notes as self-preservation and survival. On some level, she recognizes the threat to her well-being by not going after the things that she most needs. <laughs> No epic run would be complete without a stumble. Oh no. Ah. That's a bit of a bummer. But don't give up hope. It's not the fireworks that mattered. No, don't. I mean, I get it, but don't. No, just giving up on all of, all of life and goodness. Sadly, they didn't. Why go into the alley though? Don't you know this is the most dangerous part of Japan? Just don't bump in anyone. That's not how you really feel though. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, how did he know? How did he find her? Amazing. <laughs> this is a man on a mission right now. Yeah, I would like to know that as well. I like how they all came together for this plan. And Ramen Guy's here too, we're all here. All my wounds have been healed. Already. And if we can get fireworks out of this, that's just the icing on the cake. It's another, another show. <laughs> and this is especially meaningful from him, paying his exorbitant Japan taxi fare, despite being a miser. 
It's okay, we have the power of God and ramen on our side. <laughs> yeah, real man's man. <laughs> this is so hype, I love it. This tunnel driving. Tunnel ride. Speaking of narratives, right? Like, imagine looking back on this day as a quartet. There's no way this doesn't, yeah, seal your relationship forever in some small way, at least. We were all there that day. The day we spent $300 on a taxi ride to see one firework. <laughs> oh, there we go. More than just one. Still through a window, but a very different window. You can roll down, maybe. Roll roll down the window. Okay. <laughs> For that one brief moment, there was a god. Yeah, it wasn't about the fireworks at all. It never was. Ooh, man, I feel this. Feel it. Couldn't hear the fireworks. Damn, that was a gesture. I'm not ready for new school yet. Hold on. <laughs> it's just like that summer break was a success. So for me, that scene pulled off something that I, I feel is rarely pulled off where the romance actually comes through. There's so many shows, it's like, here's a boy, here's a girl. Duh. You know, they fall in love because boy and girl, the end. But not here. One thing that's been established, I guess for both of them, but especially for Miyuki, is how he processes his emotions. He's an action taker. I connect with that because I am somewhat of a naturally timid person, I would say. Just base stats. But if I want something, if something is really meaningful to me, it's not that I have courage to take action towards it. It's not that I'm able to meticulously craft a, a perfect plan that will help me get what I want. It's actually somewhat darker. It's that I, I actually can't control myself. I can't not do something. And so I don't even have time to sit around and come up with a perfect synopsis for what I'm going to do. I just have to be moving because it's the only thing that can soothe the <laughs> storm that I'm experiencing in those moments. And then you just sort of roll with the punches. I'm leaving Jeju soon, but the fact that I'm here at all is an example of that. You know, I fell in love in New York in June, went on three dates and could not cope with the emotions that arose. And so I made a spontaneous decision to change most of my plans and move to Jeju. And it's been a roller coaster ever since, but it's not because of some kind of self-confidence or like take chargeness. It, it was like I was just in hell not being able to do anything and feeling powerless. And so I did the only thing that I thought I could, even though it was insane. And it was his destiny, it seemed. But it works so well for what's been established for Kaguya because she is someone who feels trapped behind a window and feels unvalued and feels ignored. This was the opposite extreme opposite of, of everything, of all of that. For her knowing who Miyuki is, knowing he's usually sort of timid and reserved and serious, for him to go to that length and to spend the exorbitant hundred dollars on the cab fare, to show her a minute of fireworks and to have rallied the whole group of friends together, nothing will ever replace that. Like, speaking of forming narratives that act as glue in the last episode, no guarantee they'll end up together. She's always gonna remember that, that moment for the rest of her life. And I'm sure there's a lot to extract from that, but you know, one thing that comes to mind front and center is if you really value someone romantically, let's say, or not even romantically, how great would it be to be really cool in a moment like that and to go really big for someone to show up for them when they most need it? That's love right there. That's more than love. That's a, a bonded destiny. And school. Back to mundanity. <laughs> he really pulled it out of the bag at the end there. Kaguya doesn't want to avoid him. You better not after all that. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of effort. Yeah, whoa, 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 we saw the cost. What was it? 17,000 yen. Yeah, it's steep. Steep cost for a miserly high school student working his ass off. I mean, he gets to just live with the life that, of knowing he's the man. Oh, <laughs> so much for that. Nah, but in real life, he wouldn't regret it at all. He'd be happily working it off. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really buy it, though. Yeah, it was all pent up. Right, right. I get it. I understand. Oh no, is his memory war warp it? Warping it? Oh no, I thought it was pretty cool. So adorable. Adorable. Oh, it's worse than adorable. We went to Conceited. He's just not used to living in that world yet. That's why. It's, it's too big for him. I get the guilt. But actually, it was amazing. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. For once. Don't shoot yourself. Okay. And then the other foot. Could be farther from the truth. This is cringeworthy. Don't. Don't, uh, don't blow it. She's free as always and having a great time. I want to live my life freely like Chica lives hers. They walk past each other. And then stopped to grunt. 
And we're back to it, back to it, back to these games, like, yeah, nothing changes. A lot has changed and yet nothing has changed. Here we go, the planes again. The planes are the ending. It was all prophesied. That's very insightful. He looks completely calm and composed. It's someone who does the Miyuki thing of thinking you always have time and then waiting till your emotions bubble up to the surface before doing something. You don't always have time. You should just do it right away. I feel this all the time, but not doing something I want to do right away means it's exponentially harder the next time. The more I think about it, the more I feel like so much of behavior is habit. The very act of saying something like, I'll do it next time, means you've now built up that tendency, you know, that neural pathway one level stronger so that the next time it's even more likely you're going to say, I'll do it next time. It worked out in the fireworks episode, but it doesn't always work out in life. You miss opportunities. If it feels that way, there's really no reason to wait. I believe in you guys. But also not really. <laughs> Why can't I pick on him? Oh no, he just walked into this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not the worst decision. He was just a helpless victim in that. Another, no more excuses. Meanwhile, in The Sims. Duh! <laughs> Let's do something about it. I believe in you guys, but also not really. Oh! Body's just taking over a little bit there. Confess! Confess your love and end the war. How adorable. This is the biggest misinterpretation of what she said. <laughs> well, the first season has ended, and we've somehow moved a lot while also barely moving at all. <laughs> As I've said, I think one of the, the ways that romantic shows fail a lot is just having a boy and having a girl and having that in itself be a stand-in for love or attraction. The difficulty with conveying it in media is a lot of these feelings are intangible, but one of the paths there is to focus on what I feel is, is one of the greatest aspects of love and romance, which is the other person being a reflection of something that you need to grow. Relationships are complicated and multifaceted, but I think one common element in good relationships is at least looking at it from an individual level, the other person is a reflection of yourself. I mean, there are likely going to be physical elements of it as well and other elements, but emotionally, I think it's no accident who, who we're attracted to. And and things work really well when people are good for us and we are good for them, you know, where it becomes sort of a shared journey. And I think that this show has done it pretty well. It's established that Miyuki and Kaguya are not just attractive teenagers who are successful in school who happen to be in proximity, although that's some of it, but they are each to the other on some level and an instinctual and destined pull towards themselves in a way. I think that became pretty clear with Kaguya this episode. Miyuki is someone who can show her things she needs to believe in in order to be herself, I guess. And for Miyuki, Kaguya is someone that he admires. And that is a telling sign that she has Thing that he can grow from as well. And if it goes really well, they're doing that in a way that is good for them, but is unselfish. You know, they give as much as they get or more. You know, I think the optimal situations are when both people have the better bargain, if that makes sense. Oh, we got a little bit of a, a different ending. I'm on to you, scheming principal. This girl just keeps popping up. Well, it's not that she could dance, but acceptable. Anime running intensifies. Some flashbacks, some of the finer or not so fine moments. I think, uh, honestly, the, the season finale was the highlight, for sure. The fireworks was epic. What a great display. In a way that feels, well, finding her in the alleyway was not super realistic, but the effort was. The last minute taxi ride, that's legit. So I've gone that extra mile, is really cool. That moment in the bed, I think, would be the low point. <laughs> but not, you know, not the worst thing. Not the end of the world. Indeed. Indeed. I wonder who will be the first. I can see it going, going either way. And with that, season one comes to a close. The show has been a lot of fun. It can be really silly at times, but it's clear that underneath that, it's masking real heart and real warmth. And when it comes out, it's it's glorious. And I feel like I'm confident that that's going to get even more pronounced as the show goes on. There's a lot of life that these characters have that is just waiting to come out. And also a lot of danger. You know, one of the things I'm most concerned about going forward is Kaguya's relationship with Chika. There's some tension there that I feel like is going to create some darkness. Both of the characters, but especially Kaguya, also tend to spiral a little bit in a very relatable, but sort of terrifying way. One of the things that I really like about the show is that it is 
at least most of the time, very self-aware. It plays into the ridiculousness, but the ridiculousness is also real. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is the high school brain, but sort of exaggerated and put to music with patterns and repetition added in a way that's hilarious. But the, you know, the poignancy, the life or death nature of the mundane, the self-doubt, the uncertainty, the teen angst and anxiety, it kind of takes me back. <laughs> transports me to a time and I'm not even going to say a distant time it's like it was still happening it's still happening <laughs> just less so I guess I'm going to take a guess and say that Miyuki will be the one to confess first I think Kaguya will get what she wants but it will not be through the tactics she thinks she needs to employ to get them and you just hope it'll happen in really excellent and dramatic fashion although I'm sure that will come with some conflict as well